Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are tearing down the work we've already done. It's the day to hopefully put the new window in the wall. That means tearing down the cabinets that are in the way, the drywall, the studs, the insulation, the siding outside, the old window, everything. We've already emptied the cabinets. Now it's time to go ahead and take them down off the wall and begin this process. Yay. Alright, this is the last screw. I want you to take it out and I'll hold the cabinet. Oh. It'll be easier for me to hold this cabinet. Securely secured somehow. Watch out. Yeah, check the top, I guess. I thought I got them all. Wait, it's probably much that tight. It's good on them. This is just in here that tight? Yeah, it is. Wow. All the wall cabinets have been taken down enough for us to be able to pull the drywall off right here, this whole section of where we're going to reframe the window. We will put new drywall down on that end, and so we'll have to take that other set of wall cabinets down. We're just not going to do it today because our goal for right now is to get this old window out and the new one in and sealed up as fast as we can. We can always do the drywall stuff later. So we've got everything that we can off on the outside. This little trim piece is just floating here. It's not attached to any of the studs. I got the wire plates off so that we can pull these studs out and everything fine. What we're planning on doing is the window studs are right here. So we opened up to the next one. This is solid, no rot here. So the new wall will probably just butt up next to it. And we'll go on down to this one, which is also the next one down the line. This is the junk plywood, but the actual stud itself feels fine. So we'll probably stop right here as well. So we're replacing about a five foot section of the wall. So Sam's very carefully taking down the crown molding because we will reuse it. And then we're gonna start taking down the three sheets of drywall right here. And we wanna say thank you to Jeff and Mary for getting us contractor bags, gloves, and a ton of screws. Thank you so much. Go ahead and just throw that out the window opening. We'll clean it up out front later. That way we don't um, bring it through the house. Okay, um, I need a cutter.
throw it out. Take all that out? Yeah, we'll bag that up though. Just so you know, there is a box fan blowing right there, straight out the window opening. And we're choosing to throw some of the stuff outside rather than bring it back through our home. This doesn't look moldy at all. Most of the mold was on that first day with the drywall and that paneling piece. But we're not going to take any chances. I probably need to cut that floor more. Yeah. It won't go that way any, will it? I'm going to do this plywood strip here, I'll have more lateral movement for it. We have ourselves here one beef and header. Better than the original design because I didn't use them in the mobile home. All right, we are making some progress, which is good because it's uh, late and our wall's open. All right, I got here our header that I made. It is two two by fours with half inch worth of plywood in the middle to make it just as thick as it is tall and wide. We marked the center of our header beam here because we want to put our new window centered with the light. 
the original light and original window and everything were not in line and wasn't that bad off but if we're gonna do it we'll be OCD about it we've got our small little wall studs cut for this to go up right like that and Angel's outside cutting two wall studs for me right now and we'll start putting this thing together we'll start with holding this up slapping the stud right left and then we'll come back in with I think it's called King stud it's a supporting stud that holds the header up. This is a lot better than what they had in here originally, which was pretty much no header, no nothing. It was two by fours. That looks really tall, but it's right. <laughs> I think it's the roof. That's good and square. Okay. It's going to be the strongest part of the entire house. But some of the people going by are like, that's it. They're scrapping their house. I told you they're going to do it, Thelma. They done, th they done resort to scrapping. <laughs> they better get that cup of water out first. I'll tell you, I'm going to go get it. I've got all the framing done and everything that I can do from the inside. So now it's time to head outside and we're going to do house wrap and then put some siding on and do some flashing and make up for the differences in the window opening and work our way towards that finish line, which is putting the window in tonight. We hope. Smash my fingers. Just enough. I did, didn't I? Oh my gosh. No, actually we're one short. Oh no. We can use one of the old ones for that, I guess. 
Well, that's all of the wire plates in place. It's very special to do that. Not very special. It's very important to do that because you don't want to uh, electrocute yourself. Now it's time to get up on the ladder and start doing the house wrap. We're gonna fish it under the siding as far as we can reach to the studs, staple it up there, and that'll just be good enough for now. At least we'll know this one section will have house wrap on it. We will address this whole, whole house on the exterior projects when that day comes. It's ladder. Well, we've called it quits outside for tonight. I want to wait until tomorrow where I have a lot of daylight and a lot of daytime for uh, flashing out the wall and doing the window and everything to do it properly. But since it's supposed to get down to about 46 degrees tonight, we're going to go ahead and insulate from the inside. That should at least get us a little bit warmer in here. It's supposed to get down pretty cold tonight. So we are taking what's left of our insulation and just taping it up over the window here, or what's supposed to be a window, to uh, just give us a little extra insulation, I guess. Hey, it reminds me of the stories I used to hear where people would take newspapers and put them up in old homes for insulation. Well guys, that's it for this evening, but we're not it for the video. Stay tuned, and let's go ahead and fast forward to when we start to install this window. See you then. All right, guys, welcome back. It's the next day, and we have got the world's loudest chipper down there at the road. We'll shoot a little B-roll there if you can see it there. Apparently, they're trimming for power lines. So the game plan is we got some aluminum flashing from the store that is white on one side. We're going to approach this more as a camper than a house. What I mean by that is I'm going to use a rivet gun, and I'm going to attach the siding to the flashing or flashing to the siding to fill in the vertical space. It'll make more sense as you see the video take place here. After that, we'll start sealing it up and put the window in. The method we're following for the window installation is exactly like Doug from Different posted. There's a link in the video description below to that. That is hands down the best how to install a window video, and that's what we're following. So go check that video out if you wanna know how to install the window properly. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stick you on time lapse and we'll get busy. All right, so I've done with the first side here and it actually worked out really, really well. Now, you know the phrase, fight fire with fire? That's what I'm doing here. We have aluminum siding and we're putting up aluminum siding 
to patch, <laughs> patch, patch it and fill it in. That's what fatch is, patch and fill. So we're also treating this more like a camper and we've done a lot of camper renovations and rebuilds. So this is kind of more what we're used to using a really good, very, very expensive, but very good sealant. It's called Lexel, L-E-X-E-L and using aluminum and then pop rivets. You end up with a very strong, waterproof, flexible solution when working with aluminum siding. So fire with fire, you fix aluminum with aluminum and you go mobile home route like mobile campers because it's not a house, so you can't use house stuff. All right, rant over, time to do the left side. I guess I'm going to start flashing everybody on camera here. It's all right. It's just window uh -oh. flashing. Window flashing. Do not adjust your television set. Do not turn your TV off. Made sure to put this on right side up this time. I don't want it leaking. All right, line me up at the bottom, left to right. That way. Well, I don't know what that way means. Um, you're good. Good? Yeah, you gotta pick it up a little bit. Oh yeah, remember this has to go up. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That thing. Wow. All right, just line me up left and right. Centered. Okay, well you nudge it, okay? I'll hold it in place. It doesn't have to be down to the sixteenth of an inch.
Smell that? Sweat. No. Smell of victory and installing a window. <laughs> Thanks, son. Ratting me out. Yep. Mm -hmm. Y'all better be glad there's no smell of vision because for it to be end of October, it is still hot. I think down it's here. about 70 today. Yeah. We just thank you, really. Lord, because it's been a beautiful day. Two days. Yes. For us to have had our house kitchen. open like yeah. a can of beans. <laughs> Open a can of worms. I guess we open up the can of house there. Thankfully, we got it all sealed back up. And uh, let me know what you guys think of our solution for the metal siding fill-in part. Um, epic win or epic fail? We are pretty dang proud, if we say so ourselves, as far as taking off-the-shelf items from Home Depot and Lowe's and fixing a mobile home, where usually you have to have specialty parts and all sorts of weird things. We've gotten kind of used to it. And Say that again. We've gotten kind of used to it. Yeah, it's true. Um, I don't know if I said this earlier in the video, but the window we got is not the special order expensive one we talked about in the past. This is one off the shelf from Home Depot, and this one gets the credit for finding it. I'm a Lowe's guy because it's 20 miles closer to us, but she did some virtual legwork and saved us a couple hundred bucks. So I guess you just bought yourself a Lazy Susan. Nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, we appreciate you watching as always. Leave us a comment. We love reading them. And we'll see you on the next video. See you guys. Bye. Coming up next on Green Acre Homestead. All right, well, I just about royally messed up. As is kind of usual for how I go when I work, I've lost track of time. And I've missed lunchtime for the boys. It's pretty late. So.